All right, guys, welcome back to another video. So in this one, we're going to be restoring this awesome antique ham plane, getting it back up to functionally usable condition so I can put it in my toolbox and actually get some use out of it on some of the upcoming projects. So this is a Stanley Bailey number four type 11. So I was able to identify it as a type 11 because of the small adjuster knob, as well as we've got three patent dates behind the frog here, which pretty much perfectly identifies it as a type 11, which means that this hand plane was made sometime between 1910 and 1918, making it over a hundred years old, which is amazing. I believe that this is now the oldest tool that I've collected and I'm really excited to get it cleaned up and back in service in my shop here. The other cool thing about this plane is that it has a corrugated sole. So this is the first hand plane I've collected that has that corrugated sole. I don't see them very often and I've always wanted to get one just because I think that they're very interesting but they're usually in fairly rough condition. Now I've heard really good things and I've heard really bad things about that corrugated sole so I wanted to kind of learn for myself and see how well it actually works uh, and if it actually makes any kind of difference. So again, I'm very excited to get this thing back into working condition. So we're gonna take it apart and just kind of get a closer look at how how bad of a shape this thing is in overall. Time goes by. It's just a measurement refined to help us decide what mattered most inside. But you are different. Time grows distant. You get closer as time goes and starts again. Breathe in slow. We don't always have to know It's coming around Just listen to the sound Of the longings They put in perspective So after getting this whole thing apart, I have to say I'm very, very impressed by the condition that it's in. Other than the few problems that I knew about when I bought it, everything else looks perfectly fine. All of our threads are nice and clean, nothing's jammed up, uh, nothing was super tightened in either. Like I was able to undo all the bolts super easily. So like I said before, the only problems that I so far can find with this plane are the two problems I knew about beforehand. The first of which is kind of the egregious bend to the blade. You can see it against the ruler here. That is, uh, that's, that's pretty bad. It's, uh, we've got a nice big bend in there. So from what I understand about these blades, everything from basically here back is non-hardened steel, which means I should be able to bend it back without it cracking. Now, if it does, I do have others of these blades. I do have a couple other uh, old number fours and number fives that I've worked on in the past that I can steal a blade from if I need to, or I can just go and buy a brand new one from Lee Valley. It's really not that big of a deal if this blade can't be fixed because that's a, that's a pretty serious bend to it. And again, I knew that when I bought it, I knew that I might have to replace the blade, but if I can get it fixed, that's even cooler because yeah, this just gives me a little bit of an extra challenge. Then on our lever adjuster, you can see we've got a pretty good bend there as well. Again, I'm guessing that something either got dropped on this plane or some, or this plane got dropped onto like concrete or something to give it all these different bends, but this is going to be a super easy one to fix. Uh, I should just be able to put it on my granite surface and lightly tap on this back part until it goes nice and flat. So that's going to be a very easy fix. Uh, so that one I'm not too worried about. And the other problem is the tote knob. Now the knob is in perfect condition. There's no cracks, nothing to it. Uh, so I'm guessing that this might actually be a remade knob. Uh, it doesn't look like it's rosewood, but I also am not too familiar with how much different, you know, variation there is in rosewood. So it could be, but I'm not sure. Either way, I am going to keep this thing around because it's a quite a nice looking knob. And if I get another plane in the future that just doesn't have one, uh, and I don't want to go through all the effort of making one, then this will be a good one to throw on there. But uh, yeah, it's a pretty clean looking one. This is also giving me nice measurements for when I want to remake it. Because we do need to remake the tote. This one, 
one is uh, absolutely destroyed. It was wrapped up with like hockey stick tape or something like that. Now my hope with when I was taking that tape off is that the crack on here was not as bad as it seemed. But as soon as I took it off the plane, I knew it was going to be pretty bad because we've got this whole chunk missing out at the back here. So we definitely need to remake the tote. Now I would say that this is actually the, the original tote. It looks like rosewood from the little areas that I can see that don't have the tape just permanently stuck to it. Uh, so I would guess that this was the original tote and it's just been absolutely battered and destroyed it's been broken off all that kind of stuff so this we're definitely going to remake so because we need to remake the tote we might as well remake the knob as well which will just make this project a little bit more fun make it a little bit more interesting and unique because i've never actually made a tote and knob for any of my planes before all the planes i bought in the past have come with perfectly good condition knobs and totes so i've never really had to remake them or worry about remaking them so this is going to be extra fun addition to this project specifically so our next step here is with some hot soapy water we're going to go through and just scrub down all these pieces get as much of that old crud and oils and all the wd-40 that i just sprayed on here and get as much of that off as i possibly can then we can move on to actually starting to clean off some of the rust on all of these pieces Now we're gonna throw all of our pieces into a rust eating solution. This will remove the majority of the surface rust and really show us what we're working with with all of these old parts. So our rust solution clearly is not at its full strength. Again, that stuff is over a year old now and it's been sitting here for a long time. I'm, I was I really was skeptical that it was gonna work anyway, but I figured it was worth a shot. And even after leaving this stuff in there for way too long and nothing, we still have like large pockets of rust on the blade, on the chip breaker, even on the body, we've got large sections of rust. So it didn't do as good of a job as it did when I first got it, of course, which it was fully expected. So anyway, while I had the stuff here, I also figured I should go through and start flattening stuff off. And I have to say that if you ever find a Stanley plane that has a bent blade or a bent lever adjuster or a chip break or anything, don't even think about twice about buying it. It is super, super easy to go through and just get a perfectly flattened blade. Now the next step here is to take all of my pieces over to my little sandblasting cabinet and we're just going to sandblast every visible surface across pretty much all of our different pieces. Because that rusting solution really didn't do a good job, I can especially see it on like the inside of the chip breaker there. We still have a lot of surface rust on there. We're just going to blast everything. We're going to put, I think I have uh, an 80 grit, uh, blasting media in the cabinet right now so it's a pretty rough grit but basically what that'll do is if we go through and blast everything it'll put a nice rough textured surface and then whatever areas we want to polish up we can polish up from there using some sandpaper and that any areas that we don't really care about or areas that we're gonna be painting like the body of the plane here we can just leave it at that surface finish and it's ready to move on to those next steps but the really important thing here before I go over to the sandblasting is I need to make sure that everything is fully dried off because if we have any moisture in any of these little holes in that that blasting media is gonna get stuck in there super super easily and uh, uh, yeah, it's just going to cause problems later on. So I'm going to let this stuff dry out for, you know, maybe an hour, half an hour to an hour. Uh, just make sure there's no moisture isn't stuck in any of these little bolt holes, uh, anything like that. But then, yeah, we'll go through and we'll just blast everything, knock off all the leftover rust, all the old Japaning, and just get rid of all the stuff on there. So we have nice raw metal to work with.
now have all of our parts sandblasted and they're looking pretty good. We've got all of that surface rust off there. Uh, let's things on like the body here. I got little spots where I just left some of that old Japaning on there. It's really not that big of a deal. If I was trying to like really do a, you know, a top quality job of, and you know, prepare these things for resale, then, you know, maybe I'd go in and do a little bit better. But also my sandblasting unit, I can't actually see what I'm doing with it, with it because it's a really cheap unit and the window on it has just been destroyed over the few times that I've used it. So it's impossible to see what I'm actually spraying. So doing a really high quality job is just not really that possible. So on this project, I actually went through and sandblasted everything because we had all that rust left on there, even after that rust solution. Uh, we, I just went through and sandblasted everything to give us a nice clean surface on as many pieces as possible. Typically, I'll just sandblast the, the body and the frog just to get you know all that old Japaning off. But in this case, I wanted to sandblast everything. And it actually showed me some really interesting stuff too. So the lever cap here, unlike a lot of the other Stanley planes that I have, this one is just straight steel. So when you sandblast it, it gives you a nice, clean, smooth surface. And you can even tell the edge is hardened so it actually doesn't take the sandblasting that much. Uh, so really, all we did on here was just knock off any of the surface impurities and we're left with a nice, smooth finish that we can go straight to polishing on. So this is a really nice finish, actually. Then similarly, on the blade and chip breaker on most of the parts here we're actually left with that fairly rough finish because i'm using 60 to 80 grit blasting media we do we're left with a fairly rough finish and you can definitely see it on the cast iron here we'd have that nice kind of i don't know textured gray color but what's really interesting is on the blade here you can see exactly the difference between the hardened portion of the blade and the soft portion of the blade because there's that line in there where the back side of this blade was very was obviously hardened so it, the sandblasting really doesn't make that big of a difference it only adds a little bit of texture whereas on the softer steel it actually adds in a whole bunch of texture so i just find that very very interesting uh because you can see exactly the difference between the hard and the soft steel in the blades but anyways guys that's going to do it for this video i do hope you enjoyed it in the next one we're going to get on to painting the body the frog all those different parts as well as polishing all of our non-painted parts so we're going to get this plane looking real real sharp in the next video here but as always guys i do hope you enjoyed this one and i will see you in the next one